how did rainforests evolve? And what were the very first forests like? Many people can conceptualize of individual species evolving over time, but oftentimes people don't think about the entire biome as a whole evolving and changing over geological time. For example, the rainforest that we have today, like in the Amazon, may superficially look like the rainforest of the past, like during the dinosaur age. But if we look closely, the, the type of, of plants and animals within these forest biomes are almost entirely different. Uh, so there was an evolutionary process of the as these biomes and the entire ecological network changes over time as new animals and plants come up and adapt to it. So how did this process begin? When plants first came onto land, there wasn't even any soil yet. There was just rocks and sand and mountains and deserts and coastlines. Algae would be in blooms near the coast. And as this algae began to colonize the land, it began to differentiate into more vascularized plants. But these were very small and low to the ground. Eventually, by the Silurian era, you begin to see mosses taking over parts of the landscape. And you have these large moss forests, almost. But the largest things around at that time were actually not plants at all. They were giant pillar-like fungi that towered above these mosses. But again, these are nothing like we would recognize today as being a legitimate forest. It's really during the Silurian Devonian that the, you have a sort of green revolution on earth and suddenly vast continents are becoming to be more green and filled with plants. But in the early Devonian, these plants were only around waist height. We don't get a lot of very tall plants and we certainly don't have forest yet. So what changed? Well, the reason why plants can't grow that high at this time is because of their vascular system. The higher and higher they grow, the higher and higher they have to transport water to reach those leaves at the very top so that they can photosynthesize. So they have a problem with water and transporting water, and that's what's keeping everything so low. But there's going to be a revolution in the plant world somewhere within the early Devonian. And that is the development of lignin. Now, lignin is the main compound within wood and bark. It's an organic compound that kind of looks like a, a brown powder when it's by, isolated by itself. But when lignin is structured within cellulose, it can create bark. And we actually see that plants at this time were developing thicker, more vascularized xylem which is a precursor to de evolving these wood. However, this is mainly wood and bark and lignin compounds based along the roots. Remember, at this very early time, we would not have had soil like we would currently be thinking about it. Back in the Ordovician and Silurian, the, the plant species were growing directly on the rocks and causing these rocks to erode. Well, the invention of lignin actually expedites this process and especially when we consider that a major organic component in soil to this day is lignin this is going to unlock an entirely new branch of geochemistry uh, and soil creation on a global scale that had not been seen before which is truly going to revolutionize the biomes and lay the groundwork for later forests so towards the middle of this Devonian period, we start to see types of ferns that are developing uh, and building on these lignin and wood archetypes to where they're not just getting wood in their roots. Now they're using wood to support their structures and grow taller. And we start to see ferns and fern trees that come around that can grow as high as 26 feet which is very impressive. They would have been the tallest thing that we know of at this point in this period and would be the first uh, things that could be said to artificially at least start to resemble trees. 
Remember, it's very advantageous for plants at this time to grow tall because they're all in competition for sunlight to photosynthesize. So if you can grow taller than your competition and then burst out with your leaves above everyone else, you're gaining access to all of that sunlight and you have no competition to stop you. Meanwhile, you're casting your shadow below onto all of the other smaller shrub-like species. So it's a great advantage. And indeed, we see not soon after these very first fern trees crop up, we start to see trees that would look a little bit more familiar to us today. These are called Archaeopteris. Now, Archaeopteris is not quite a seed-bearing plant. There are no seeds as we know them at this time. Everything is reproducing by spores. But Archaeopteris spores are transitional. We can start to see them gaining some of the traits that we would associate with seeds, although they are still spores. A key part of this Archaeopteris tree development is that they're going to be one of the very first plants that we see to have extensive root systems. The roots of Archaeopteris would spread around the world and alter soil and geochemistry forever. As soon as these very, very early trees crop up in the middle of Devonian, they're going to quickly spread and go global. We're going to find them on most continents. And they don't just affect things by their roots and affecting the soil, because the litter from these trees is actually going to uh, cause huge changes in freshwater ecosystems as well. It's going to introduce tons of nutrients into the freshwater ecosystems of like lagoons and swamps and rivers. And this is going to bring about a huge boom in freshwater fish populations, as well as some really interesting ancient freshwater arthropods. These first and earliest forests where we have things that are recognizable as trees, these Archaeopteris forests, are going to be widespread over the world in the late Devonian period. They're going to be cropping up. They prefer wet soils. Um, so they're going to be cropping up in a sort of rainforest-like environments that get lots of water, but they're not alone. There are tons of different secondary plants, smaller plants, shrubs, vines, all kinds of plants that would be existing in this these first forests together with the trees. And not the least of them are the animal species. So almost as soon as we find terrestrial plants coming onto land, we can find some of the earliest terrestrial animals following them, al following along with them. So some of these earliest animals are going to be the arthropods. So these are things related to, you know, insects, crustaceans, um, you know, horseshoe crabs. They're, the arthropods are going to be coming onto land very soon after, if not even before the plants. You might get some larger sea scorpions coming ashore occasionally, but for the most part, the very first arthropods that we're going to see on land are actually very, very small, you know, millimeters or less in size. They're going to be things like mites, um, and, and, and tiny little arthropods, pre-insect, that are going to be surviving by eating the detritus of a lot of these early terrestrial plants. And throughout the Silurian, um, we're going to see mainly this. But and when we get to the Devonian, we start to see um, insects um, and so more hexapods develop and a little bit larger uh, types of arthropods going to be coming up and eventually by the time we get into the mid Devonian we're going to start seeing some of these arthropods um, not only going to be detritivores eating the detritus of these plants but they're going to be herbivores directly eating these plants so the plants are going to be forming the foundation of this new forest biome and then you're going to have your herbivores that are going to be eating these plants at the base of the pyramid that's going to open up the ecological pyramid to carnivores and things that are going to be eating these herbivorous arthropods. And by the late Devonian, that's what we're going to see. Tiktaalik and other species of lobe-finned fishes are going to be hanging out in these shallow freshwater uh, areas near uh, a lot of these more densely wooded uh, forests. Um, and they're going to be predating upon a lot of these arthropods 
and even some smaller uh, species. Now, the Devonian was also much hotter than it is today. The average temperature during the Devonian was 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, the average temperature in the 20th century was 57 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a almost double uh, temperature. This is a much hotter world than today. And that's also going to correspond with a much higher concentration of carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, that's going to be at a much higher concentration during the Devonian era than it is today. Carbon dioxide is also a crucial ingredient for photosynthesis. So this is going to stimulate all of these green plants to have a tremendous growth spurt with these high levels of CO2 in the atmosphere. By the end of the Devonian, all of this change is going to be catching up with our first forests. The Archaeopteris root system specifically is going to be causing way increased patterns of weathering and soil erosion that's going to be leaching a lot of nutrients like phosphates into the oceans. And whenever the phosphate is flooded into these oceans, that's going to cause a, a, a large chain of events like the You're going to have huge algal, algal blooms that are going to deplete oxygen in the ocean. And it's actually going to contribute to a catastrophic extinction event at the end of the Devonian in the seas, where you see a ton of marine life facing extinction, uh, potentially because of the kind of changes that these first forests were bringing about. This is an instance, right, where we can see a new group of organisms coming onto the scene. These first big trees and forests are gonna be causing such a huge impact on the environment that it's going to have such big ripple effects in the balance of the rest of the biosphere. And a loft, uh, oftentimes, a lot of these animals are not able to adapt to the kinds of radical changes that are being introduced. One of these species is actually going to be Archaeopteris itself, who is not going to last very long after the Devonian. But it's not as a result of some kind of mass extinction event like was the oceans were experiencing at the end of the Devonian. In fact, terrestrially, it seems to still be uh, the case that most terrestrial animals and plants were still flourishing and these first forests were still very healthy overall and were still thriving across the globe. So what happened to the Archaeopteris trees then, you ask? Well, they were outcompeted, right? You might think that because they were quite similar in a lot of ways to, you know, being like proto trees like we might see today, it was actually going to be very different looking kinds of trees that replace them, things called scale trees. Um, and so scale trees are actually most closely related to a kind of club moss that is still around today. But back then, these things did not look very much like moss at all. You might think of a huge shoot that's coming out of the ground, like a very thick trunk, right? Once these things were growing, they, they didn't expand and get wider afterwards. So this shoot is going to go as tall as it can before it starts really um, getting a canopy. But every single part of the surface area is going to develop into a leaf as this stock gets higher. And once the leaf goes through its life cycle, it will actually fall out and the area where the leaf came out is going to become a diamond shaped scale. So the bark of these trees is actually a diamond pattern with like that looks like scales, hence the name scale trees. And these trees are going to be immense. They're going to be some of the biggest and most widespread trees in the forest of this next age after the Devonian called the Carboniferous, one of my favorite periods of geological history. And the scale trees dominate these forests. They're the tallest things in the canopy. Once these stalks reach their high height, then they start to branch out and start to get big leaf patterns at the top of them, uh, absorbing as much sunlight as they please. There's also going to be a plant species that, again, look kind of like alien looking trees, but in actuality are related to modern horsetails. So it's a very strange environment when we begin to look at it on an actual species level. This is like a forest nowhere on earth that we would see today, full of lots of primeval, strange plants and animals. Now the Carboniferous is also the first era where we start to see large scale herbivores. 
before many of the plant eating species were very small arthropods. But in the Carboniferous for the first time, we're going to see a great diversification of terrestrial arthropods that is going to encompass large scale herbivores. I'm talking about taller than you or I. These are going to be eight foot long in some cases, and they're millipedes. These eight foot long millipedes are going to be tra traversing the forest floor and eating plants directly and growing to extremely large sizes. Now, one of the reasons why arthropods were able to grow to such large sizes at this time is, going, is because the oxygen concentrations were so much hard, higher than they are today. Because it's not just millipedes that are going to be growing to these truly gargantuan sizes. We're also, for the first time, going to be seeing um, not just insects, but we're going to see flying insects. So this is going to be the first time that any living thing has evolved flight. So this is quite a big first, predating any other species by millions of years. So you gotta hand it off to the insects for that. And these flying insects are going to be differentiating into a lot of different niches. Not only are there going to be herbivorous flying insects, but we're also going to see predators. We're going to see flying insects that feed upon other insects, flying or not. And the biggest, the best, the coolest flying insect of this day that we gotta talk about is the giant eagle-sized dragonfly. I mean, how cool is that? Dragonflies, gotta be some of my favorite insects. An eagle-sized dragonfly, that's one of the coolest things in this whole era. That's why the Carboniferous is so cool. You've got this forest of alien looking trees dominated by ferns and scale trees and horse tail looking trees. I mean, it, it's an alien environment populated by giant insects, giant plant eating millipedes, giant aerial predator hawks and like the dragonflies and all kinds of flying and crawling insects in between. But you're also going to be seeing arthropods in fresh water, giant sea scorpions. That's right, sea scorpions. You don't see anything like that today. I mean, this is a truly alien world. And those Tiktaalik that we caught up with in the Devonian, they're going to have differentiated into all kinds of tetrapods at this point. By the time you get into the Carboniferous, not only do you have amphibians, right? I mean, there are so many amphibians in this era. A lot of the times the Carboniferous is referred to as the amphibian world, because you're going to have amphibians that are not only in niches, like uh, like we would traditionally think of amphibians as, as occupying, kind of in the freshwater areas, but there are also going to be some snake-like amphibians of this era. Um, there's going to be amphibians that resemble kind of crocodiles at this era, like giant amphibians that are preying upon uh, all kinds of different insects and arthropods and fish. You're also going to have some of the very earliest reptiles and they kind of resemble very small lizards of this day running around. So you're already going to have amniotes like us. And speaking of us, what were our ancestors doing in the Carboniferous? Well, we were actually at this time most closely related to the very basal synapsids. Now, in this very early period, a lot of the synapsids are also going to look like lizards, but that's just superficially. Their bone structure gives away that they are well on their way to becoming the mammals of the future. But that's a different story. The Devonian and Carboniferous forests were truly lush alien worlds. These primeval ancient forests were the first of their kind on earth. Nothing had been seen of their archetype before. But at the end of the Carboniferous, when we have these vast rainforest biomes that are coming up and spreading across huge areas of the earth, there's going to be consequences. We talked about this a little bit with the kinds of nutrient runoff and faster soil erosion patterns than you would have seen previously that were already running amok in the oceans and having huge devastating impacts for the kind of marine biodiversity and causing huge extinction events at the end of the Devonian era. But at the end of the Carboniferous, 
the consequences are going to come home to the forests. And we're going to be experiencing something called the Carboniferous Rainforest Collapse. Now, this collapse happened because of climate change. But the exact causes of that climate change are still debated by scientists today. However, one thing that is known is that throughout both the Devonian and the Carboniferous era, that high amount of CO2 that we pointed out at the start is going to be steadily decreasing. As you have all of these trees and plants and these newly birthed forests are going to be conducting so much photosynthesis that they're going to begin depleting the atmosphere of carbon dioxide. A lot of this carbon dioxide is going to be locked inside of wood and bark, which things are don't really have very good mechanisms of, of digesting and breaking down right away. Uh, a lot of this organic material is going to be locked into the soils and it's going to be kept out of the atmosphere. So as you have this, this greenhouse gas being depleted in the atmosphere, you're going to get cooler and cooler temperatures which is going to create huge shocks to the system. And you're also going to have less and less carbon dioxide available for plants to do photosynthesis. So these climatic conditions are going to be compounding throughout the Carboniferous era. And you're gonna see plants having to get more and more stoma in their leaves to try to get at less and less carbon dioxide that's available for them. So the resources are going to begin to clinch around these early forests. And it's gonna cause a large scale collapse whenever the climate becomes too dry and arid to support the kind of global rainforests that we were seeing in the Carboniferous and the Devonian. So these first forests, although lush and beautiful, were actually causing massive amounts of erosion and were depleting the Earth's atmosphere, changing the composition, causing climate changes and mass extinction events. This was not an easy, painless process. And many of you probably recognize the parallels to our own times that we see with a lot of these early forests, especially in how they were fueling climate change. In fact, it's even more poetic than that because the carbon that we're releasing into the atmosphere in fossil fuels like coal, actually the majority of that carbon comes from this Carboniferous period and directly from these first forests. Because remember, these forests were taking all of that carbon dioxide that was abundant in the atmosphere at that time, and they were sequestering it into their bark and into their trunks and, and branches. And when they died, that carbon became trapped in the ground. And actually, the vast majority of the coal that we burn today is actually the remain the fossilized remains of this first carbon forest, these coal forests. So humans are kind of doing the inverse of what these first forests did, right? We're returning all of that carbon back into the atmosphere where it was then these forests captured it. But remember, back then, it was almost double the temperature as it is today. So we don't really want all of that carbon dioxide going back in the atmosphere. And ultimately, the consequences for these large carboniferous forests was their, to their own demise in the carboniferous rainforest collapse, largely from climate change. Let me know in the comments what subject you'd like me to make a base theory about next.